Hey everyone, Henry from Smoky Hills Outdoor Store with one of our most requested videos. We've actually done this in the past, but we decided to go through everything again and make sure we show all the newer uh, thermostats and things like that. What are we doing? We are going to troubleshoot a fish house furnace, specifically uh, Ice Castle suburban forced air furnace i happen to be in a house with a 30,000 btu forced air suburban which is the most common and uh, we're going to go through everything step by step this is very similar to when you would come in and purchase a fish house from smoky hills the kind of walkthrough you're going to get and the things that we're going to explain to you uh so we make sure that you have a good time and stay safe out on the ice so not a super interesting topic but definitely something we need. So let's jump right into it. I'm gonna do it as fast as I can without missing anything, but there's a lot of information. So uh, hopefully this video will help and serve as a guideline in the future. So Nate, the first thing I'm gonna start with is the things that I wanna have with me. Now these tools are really specifically for troubleshooting the furnace. This is not all the tools you need for the entire house, but for the furnace, I'm gonna need a Phillips, a flat screwdriver, some needle nose pliers, uh, I use a channel lock and then the two items that I always recommend especially if you're going to go out very far is take an extra regulator and an extra limit switch specifically for the 30,000 BTU furnace. This is a 30,000 BTU furnace limit switch. Um, both of these are available on Go Ice Fish uh, so go check them out there. We sell a lot of these online. So troubleshooting we're going to start with the very first thing a lot of people don't always think about and that is power to the house the furnace does not work if you do not have sufficient power in this house now if we look at our voltmeter right now everybody can tell this is a really high voltage which means we are plugged in to a generator right now before you start troubleshooting your furnace make sure you have sufficient power my recommendation is to plug in your furnace so you have actual power going to it and not just rely on the battery because the furnace can do strange things when the uh, voltage is low or if the voltage isn't working quite right or something's not right there that's definitely something to watch so then the next three things i'm going to talk about are the three big ones uh, we've been doing this almost 10 years and uh, i've seen a lot of different things and if you know these three things you really can troubleshoot your furnace just as well, almost just as well as what I can do or one of the guys can do yet. We're going to start with the thermostat. Lots of different thermostats out there. This is going to be the most common one currently used in an ice castle if you have an air conditioner. Uh, but when you have this one or the old manual or electronic one, what you want to make sure is when I turn on my furnace, the uh, fan on the um, furnace, uh, excuse me, if I turn on my thermostat, I want to make sure the fan on the furnace is going to start up. So let's do that right now. Put it to heat, and as you can hear, if you come down here, my fan kicked on. I'm not asking for it to heat, it. I just want to make sure the fan kicks on. That means my thermostat is good. Next thing you're going to hear, you're going to hear a click. Right there, do you hear that click? That is when the furnace is saying, hey, let some propane in so I can ignite and start the heat. If you hear that click and very soon after, within a couple of seconds usually, the system shuts down. This is point number two. If the system shuts down pretty quickly after you hear that quick click, meaning the fan turns off, you are most likely experiencing a bad limit switch. And a limit switch is really a safety switch and uh, these do go bad because they want to make sure you stay safe. You would know it's the limit switch because it shuts off almost right away after that click. Okay, so that's point number two. Point number three is the one that most people will experience and that is going to be the fans running and it runs and it runs and it runs and it just blows cold air. The air is not getting hot. I'm not talking about uh, sometimes it's not not real hot that's possible but I'm talking like it's not getting hot in general now what will happen is it will shut off eventually and start up again that is different than what the limit switch on point number two was 
So, brings me to point number three. Why is it doing that? Very simple. It's not getting propane uh, because the propane's empty, because the regulator is frozen up, tanks are frozen up. Something to do with that. Most commonly, it's going to be a regulator. Um, there's a lot of reasons why, and I can get into a lot of different things. Uh, a lot of it has to do with propane quality. A lot of it has to do just with the swings in temperatures. But unfortunately, if you're going to be in the middle of nowhere, bring an extra regulator. So I'm going to recap real quick. First thing, I hit my thermostat, whichever one I have, the fan is going to kick on. That means the thermostat is good. Remember, the thermostat has nothing to do with the heating, meaning warmer or colder. That's not what it's about. Second thing, my fan kicks on, it clicks and the furnace shuts down, meaning the fan turns off fairly quickly. That is going to be my limit switch. Third point, furnace is running, it's running, it's running, it's just blowing cold air all the time, and eventually it turns off, and then it'll try it and ignite again, it'll do that usually about three times. That is going to be a propane or a regulated issue. These are the three most common things that you have now <clears throat> a lot of people have the ability to exchange these out because it is fairly easy to do if you know what you're doing so that's why we have these same thing with the regulator the regulator is extremely easy to change out if you just have a couple of channel locks just replace the whole thing going into the main line so that's another thing to look about um, couple of other issues that's not quite as common as these let's talk about the board or the motherboard that's in the furnace seldomly do they go bad but they do um, it's not a common issue the most common reason for the boards going bad is soot that gets into the furnace now everybody's seen that you know you open up the furnace and it's got black stuff all over the inside what it does is when the soot goes in there it essentially overheats the furnace the board and the board goes bad. Main reasons for getting soot into your furnace could be a lot of factors, but here's the main ones. Driving with your furnace on, not a good thing. Definitely not a good thing. Uh, having the wind blow back into the furnace exhaust, which would be on this side, don't want that either. You don't want a lot of strong wind pushing everything back in. Third one would be uh, the propane not uh, burning hot enough meaning it's not burning cleanly could be a regulator could be a lot of moisture in the tanks could be the tanks are getting old could be the, that something's wrong with the furnace itself so there's a couple of reasons and a couple of things to look at that's not quite as common in um, I would say in the last <coughs> 10 years we've maybe replaced honestly one or two furnaces as a whole unit it's way more common to see one part go bad and um, that's why I'm telling everybody, everybody about uh, the troubleshooting because if you know these things you can do a lot of it I've got a little cheat list here because I want to talk about a couple of things um, tank heater and outlets if everybody notices by the front tanks where the two 30, 30 pound propane tanks are Ice Castle has put some 110 outlets there the 110 outlets is so you can do a tank heater lots of different options out there a lot of people use a magnetic oil pan heater there's a ton of different options but that's why they are there if you keep your tanks heated you will avoid most of the problems that's that that's just something that we see a lot when it's extremely cold it goes from really normal day to an extremely cold day you tend to run into those problems i know last year we had a lot of them this year not so much as uh, because it hasn't been as cold but that's definitely uh, one uh, to look at. Tank heaters, I know Nate uses them all the time and it works extremely well. So uh, good idea there as well. And then lastly is our service department. You know, we have Mike and Scott in our service department and these guys have done all kinds of work on furnaces. They got James back there helping tear these apart and troubleshooting them. And Suburban's always been really good about helping us with this. Um, in the last 10 years, I feel that this is the best furnace Ice Castle's ever used. And I do feel this is the best regulator Ice Castle's ever used. Uh, and, you know, it's a harsh condition. You can run into some trouble. But if you really need advice, 
contact our service department. They are open six days a week, Monday to Saturday, eight in the morning till six in the evening. You know, if you can't get a hold of somebody, leave them a message, they'll call you back absolutely as quickly as possible. And then of course, you can always come to Park Rapids. We can help you out, do everything we need to do and get you out there and have a safe trip. I really hope everybody enjoyed that video. It's a lot, I'm talking fast, a lot to cover. I hope that it helps somebody out. And if you have anybody that has a problem with their furnace, make sure you send them this video or have them contact the service crew here at Smoky Hills Outdoor Store. Have a great season, everyone. We're going to get out. We're seeing some good eyes. Let's go do it.